Story one. Every New Year, a sense of tension curls up my parents' hearts. I could see their faces suddenly getting worried, especially this time, because every New Year, my brother, Ted, comes home. Ted and I are twins, but we were different in so many ways. I always tried to love him as a big brother. We never treated me as a little sister. I don't know why. He just can't stand me. The doctor says it's because of his disease. I still remember it was a winter's holiday. Ted and I were probably five or six years old. I don't know him making snowballs in the garden when I heard my mum screaming. Ted didn't want to play with me, so he was in the room hearing her scream. We rushed into the house. We found her standing in Ted's room, panting in fear. While Ted said the corner will clue his face, the corner of Ted's cupboard was pulled open. What, what, what is it, Mary? Why did you scream? She couldn't see anything. She was shaking in fear like she had seen a ghost. I was being at this for a few seconds. My mum pointed at the open drawer. You too looked in being curious and terrified at the same time. But what we saw in it wasn't something we expected. A dead rabbit was lying inside the drawer. The rabbit was placed in a woolen scarf with almost, almost care. Someone put it to sleep and set its head and body lay side by side. Yes, its head was cut off. That was the first time my parents realised there was something wrong with my brother. Been ten years, Ted is under treatment now. The doctor said you won't have to be scared of him when he said he's shown improvement. He's ready to come back to the family to his new year day. My dad, I plan something special for him with my idea because no matter how weird he is, he'd always be my brother. We were waiting in the living room. Ted would be at home every minute. Now we're just quick to hang house. My dad and I made a banner that read, Welcome home. It's time for a new beginning. Happy New Year, Ted. We were looking at the clock anxiously when we heard a car approaching our driveway. My room mum rushed and opened the door. Blue van from cold good heart mental institution was standing outside our house. After long pulls the pause, the door opened slid open. Ted came out holding his backpack. He got in a new haircut, more like an army man. He walked up to the host po- host po- home post and my mum hugged him and joined my Ted. The funny come home and missed you so much. I made all your favourite dishes. Ted wouldn't say a single word. Mum brought him inside. He stood in the living room silently, like before. Mum and Ted went to say some extremely happy to have seen him, but Ted wasn't paying any attention to them. He was scanning the New Year's decorations. His eyes stopped roaming when he noticed the banner. Did you write that, Martha? Yes. Do you like it? I don't know what I like anymore. A brief conversation made Mum dead quiet. An awkward silence took place inside the house. It was that same feeling again. That same feeling where Ted behaves weirdly and crushes the positive view at a house of a blink. I'm not a kid anymore. I smiled and said happily, New Year, Happy New Year, I miss you. And yeah, you did as well. We, we did. I cleaned your room. And Mum and I promise you, well, don't change a single thing there. We want you to come back to your room just how you left it. That means the dead rabbit is back in the drawer, huh? Ted, don't talk like that. Why can't you just be nice to your sister? I'm freshing up. Been a long time since I've taken a bath, like a normal human being, you know. Martha, in that freak house, you can't even get a pee without being watched by a circuit guard. So he went upstairs, we all just stood there. My dad crashed my cheeks and said, They're having a rough time, Martha. Things are all we'll right, I promise. I smiled painfully because Ted's cruel cool words did hurt my feelings. When I came down, started to eat, set up the table for dinner. He said, all sat there to the smell of such delicious food made me hungry. There was some roasted pork, grilled chickens, mashed potatoes, corn sudden shrimp rolls. Everyone ate quietly. At night, after dinner, Ted went out for a walk with Dad and Mum. I cleaned the dishes when we heard our neighbour's voice outside Charlie. Charlie's late. Mum wants you home, Daddy. Charlie, where are you? We want you we into a backyard and saw a neighbour, Miss Hoffman, looking for his for you. Your son, what happened, Mr Hoffman? Have you seen Charlie Miss McGuire? No, why? He's playing right here the entire time. I can't find him now. What do you mean you can't find him? I called his friends. He didn't go to the house. I don't know what to do. My mum suddenly looked at me with scared eyes. She started to stare at me in a few seconds and said, Call your dad, Martha. Tell him to come back right now. My mum 
Why, Mum, what happened? Just so you told my dad's number. While my mum ran, walked to the upstairs a very freaky way. She always stepping, taking each step slowly. Like someone frightening was happening upstairs for her. I was going my dad. I followed her too. What's the test room when we stopped there? Her body was shaking. I felt that she would pass out. Any minute with hell was going. My mum, she's scaring me now. Without questioning my answer my question, she opened the door and we entered Ted's room. Everything was in its place except the white bed sheet was missing. She they walked to the bed and crouched down to look under the, and she stretched her hand out and pulled corners of the bed, white sheet, she had a bed, something in it. I'm not. She pulled the sheet with her hood straight. As soon as she did that, a small, lifeless hand bung out of it from that of curled up bed sheet. It wasn't difficult to guess that the hand belonged to a kid. Before we could accompany this, my dad and my brother came rushing upstairs and we got shot seeing our faces. What happened, Mary? Just like previous time, my mum again pointed at her hand, a dead kid. My dad looked back at Ted. We all looked at him with fearful, froze faces. The like history of heating yourself. No, Dad, I didn't do it. Mum, it is not me. Please trust me. Don't send me back there. I didn't do anything. I was innocent last time. I'm innocent this time as well. Please believe me. Don't send me away again. I just came home. Please, please. My mum stared and started stopping terribly. Hearing the cry of neighbours came in and we found little Charlie dead under the Ted's bed. He was strangled with a T-shirt that belonged to Ted. There was nothing we could do. The cops were called and they took him away. I didn't expect Ted to get in such serious trouble. I hope the judge reduces his punishment, taking into account his immense, poor mental history. The doctors regret the children letting him run back. But he said Ted is accomplished in t- faking normalcy. He behaved like he was completely sane. I don't know. Susan, it's so great to finally be able to get together again. Oh, it sure is. And I really appreciate you picking up the bill. I'm happy to. I've got the extra cash. Since we've all been driving so much more again, I've been using GetUpside, the free gas app that pays you cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. Wait a minute. Are you saying you actually get paid cash when you buy gas with the GetUpside app? Yes, up to 25 cents a gallon. Cash back every time I buy gas. Does that actually add up to anything? Some months I make 200 to 300 bucks. Wow, that's serious extra cash. I'm downloading the free GetUpside app now. Download the free GetUpside app now in the App Store or Google Play to save up to 25 cents a gallon when you buy gas. Use promo code MONEY for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's up to 50 cents a gallon on your next fill-up. You can cash out anytime to PayPal or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free GetUpside app and use promo code MONEY for a 25 cents a gallon bonus and your first tank. That's code MONEY. What will happen to him next? But I don't want him to start visiting us forever. I mean, if he doesn't come home for every New Year celebration, how will I know fake normalcy? It's not easy keeping all these exciting thoughts in my head and coming out. I feel a bit bad for him, though. Since childhood, he's been hearing the consequences of my deeds. He's so gullible. He still doesn't realise it was me who killed that rabbit. I put it in his drawer. My hands didn't hesitate. The second one, he strangled that poor kid and hid his body on his Ted's bed. I just hope my twin brother gets to visit us at least once a year so I don't have to pretend to be good for that one day laughter. Hi, guys. Are you enjoying the, this story? Hmm. Let's see if you enjoy the second one. Story 2. You can change your mind wherever it happens. This year is 2021. High school was my first big party. My friends and I got to considerably look around, pulled out from a fashion routine. But neither I had a charming smile, always cracked about its jokes at night times. But the entire credit goes to my dad because he used to be sending me huge pocket money. For being physical to everyone and ultimately wanted to be my friend, I kind of looked. That for granted, my roommate Jake was another rich kid, just like me. We were the Jews of our bunt batch, even though we were best friends. Dislike of a few things about him. One major thing was his way of pranking people. Sometimes Jake crossed all limits to crack a practical joke from leaving a bag full of dog poop 
in front of the dean's office is shocking gum digging gun and professor chairs he did a bunch of silly things but that one time he sent a fake love letter and things took a downfall from there we were smoking on our high school roof we heard two voices it was after school hours so we were freaked out not thinking we we're going to get caught we put on a sm- smoke and tiptoed towards the emergency stairs voices were coming from the other side of the roof so we tried to sneak back into our room without letting anyone know Jake and I were almost near the stairs when the voices got louder and they were not getting this. They didn't want to hear anything. This was such a stop. But why are we going to get a good time? You're calling a good time. is nothing but adultery, Joseph. But it's Miss Morris, I love you. Your husband and I have been dead for a while. We're going to pass out, pass out of high school soon. We'll have a little life together, you know. No, Joseph, it was all a mistake. Please, don't ever contact me again. I'm just your teacher, and that's it. You should have listened, but my heavy head's footsteps so started to come close. I ran the back of the stairs like flash, and we got inside our room. This is no such sick, this is so sick, Jude. Joseph and Miss Morris. Let there be a man, it's none of your business anyway. What? What do you have to do? Any idea how much fun we can have with this? Or will you have an idea to make new party memorial? Just matter let it stay between us. I promise a very small joke. I should have stopped him, but I didn't. I was oh, so sadly honest. I too wanted to see Jake's plan, but none of us had a minimum idea of what was going, is he going to be the most memorable new year of our lives. The next day after class, Jake and I went to the local post office. The joke wrote two letters. One for Joseph and the other one for Miss Morris. He went and posted them. A letter from Joseph read, how much Miss Morris missed loves him. He was in good mood last night, but she wants to break all boundaries except their relationship. She wants Joseph to be the New Year party. She has planned something special for him. Before that party, Joseph must stay away from her and contact her to avoid any third party attention. This matter, in a letter from Miss Morris, there was threats. He read that Miss Morris can't reject Joseph like that. She must meet him at a New Year's party, or else he will stare at his private decks and pictures of the entire high school. She tries to walk, talk to him for that, or even informs him any one. He'll go to set, do the same plan. Pretty simple. They both will come to the party, confront each other, and will realise how someone made a fool of it, both. Everything was set up according to the plan. On the eve of the New Year, a party was organised at the po- city party town hall. All night, like every year, like the kids of town, the parents attended the party. The townspeople getting drunk and celebrating like crazy. Jake and I punched, punch, punch drunk. Alcohol and food juice were drinking our friends. They needed a drink just about eyes while on the pathway. A few minutes later, we saw Joseph coming for his parents. We were wearing a new suit, apparently expecting the night to be the best night of his life. We came in and saw and started to look for Miss Morris. He waited for her, but she was nowhere to be seen. When it was around midnight and everyone was set to wish each other a happy new year, we heard a spine-chilling scream. A woman in the neighbourhood was standing outside that town hall, staring at the top of it with wide, fearful eyes. We ran outside. We gathered under the town hall where you saw a horrifying scene. There was a huge clock at the top of the town hall. I know a town clock woman standing with t- with rope tied to her neck. Everyone could guess who she was. It was Miss Morris. Joseph's face turned white. And Miss Morris, what are you doing there? A sick yet painful smile appeared on her face. She wiped her face with her hands and said, I'm fine, Joe. I'm just too tired to go on with this life. I know you love me, and I want to show you how much I love you. Too, I just... Can't handle these threats anymore. I have to stop being scared and running away from my feelings. Come down, please. Look, it's almost midnight. Count on me. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Miss Morris, please. That was a prank. Please come down. It's my fault. It was a fake Joe yelled, screamed, panic. Seized. Prank gone wrong, but Miss Morris, a different sake of mind. Any of us, anyone who started screaming, telling her to come down, we could all appreciate what she was going to do next. She didn't 
Give us the time to save her. Don't worry. I'll be all over now. Three, two, one. Happy New Year.